of standing today on what is called the Cross New Hampshire Adventure Trail. It's 83 miles long. It snakes along waterways and goes past open fields and over the White Mountains. You're going to take a ride with us today on a piece of it, and you're going to get to meet the woman who helped to make all this possible. Welcome to Windows to the Wild. I'm Willem Lang. I'm near Jefferson, New Hampshire, on a trail that started out as a dream and now runs from the border of Vermont to the border of Maine. We're here today to take a look at some of the beauty of this fantastic trail and also to meet the woman responsible for its creation. Marianne Borowski. A pleasure to meet you, uh, and this, this is a, this an incredible trail. I'm so happy to be here with you, and I'm so happy to share it with you. <laughs> I'm glad you are. You're going to take the crew today on a little bit of a bike ride over part of the trail, right? That's right. I, however, I'm going to keep at least one foot on the ground, and okay. Kiki and I will follow along. The dream that Marianne had of a cross-state trail came to her as she pedaled her way across another state. Well, it came really from the Cross Vermont Trail, the trail that goes right through uh, near yeah. where you are. Yeah, it does. <laughs> um, I had visited the Cross Vermont Trail and done little parts and pieces of it, and they occasionally have these interesting rides for fundraisers to support the, the development of the trail. And I really enjoyed it, and I would drive my car back into New Hampshire, and the trail would end oh, there at the yeah. Connecticut River. Yeah. And I'm driving back and thinking, well, somebody must be, you know, some must be taking it along. I called them up and said, who's working on taking the trail through New Hampshire? Is there anybody? Because I'd love to be part of the group. I would help out. And they said, we don't know of anybody. You're doing the group. It. <laughs> uh, so, but we think it's a great idea. Yeah. And the Cross Vermont people were thrilled because they were the ones to say, there's nothing worse to see than a sign that says trail ends. Trail end, yeah. So by extending it into New Hampshire, the trail end sign disappears. Mary Ann's love affair with long distance cycling began years ago. After a career as a scientist in Cambridge, Massachusetts, she decided to revisit something from her childhood something she needed to do. It seems to me that you've been biking for a little while now, right? That's right, that's right. I uh, started, as and most kids do, on a little bicycle as a child, and then was a commuter through my uh, high school years and into college. Oh, yeah. uh, then through my working years, I didn't ride my bike. It was the time I was living in the city, but I had finished my working career and retired a little bit early and I rode my bike cross country. I joined up with a group and started in, in uh, Washington state and rode across the northern part of the country and ended in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And after that and retiring up here, I enjoyed it so much that I talked to all my friends up here and I said, okay, where do you ride here? Where can we ride? And I learned the roads that are really nice to ride and I learned what trails were available and I enjoyed setting up rides and sitting down with a map and wondering where different places would go. Uh, yeah, right. That map became a patchwork of trails and gravel roads. Mary Ann doesn't like to mix bikes with car traffic. So the 83 mile highway she created is mostly automobile free. That was kind of one, one of many reasons for the Cross New Hampshire Adventure Trail. Yeah. Can I route something from border to border so you have a little bit of a goal, like that cross-country goal or cross-state goal, and can I make it as off-road as possible? So using rail trails like what we're on right now, yeah. dirt roads that are nice, scenic, maybe some paved roads that are quieter, a little bit out of the way, yeah. and then if I had to because there was no other choice, I would then put the, um, the, the route on a, on a road with traffic, with cars, and yeah. we don't have that much of it up here. The Cross New Hampshire Adventure Trail is Mary Ann's dream laid out from the border of Vermont at Woodsville 
across New Hampshire to Bethel, Maine. This section of the trail is one of Marianne's favorites. It's right about the Jefferson Randolph border. Pick the right time of year, and this meadow is a sea of lupin. So many places in New Hampshire is within the beautiful trees. And here on, um, in the Valley of Jefferson, there's some open fields. So you get these amazing panoramic views of the mountains. And so that's why I thought you would want to see this here today. Yeah, this is that's nice. That's very special what we have Beautiful. up here in the North Country. And it couldn't be more colorful with all these lupins. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Like France, <laughs> lavender season. Lavender season. <laughs> <laughs> On the day we meet Marianne, she brings along some friends. Looks as though Noah's Ark has drifted ashore. I'm Kate Slattery. I live in Gilead, Maine, and this is Jill. She's a nine-year-old quarter horse. I love to trail ride, and I've done some endurance trail rides um, in the past couple of years since I've retired. Kate uses the adventure trail for training and for fun. I know that the trail is uh, an improved trail. There's no hazards on it. It's beautiful going through the beaver dams and seeing the mountains. Uh, the bikers and snow machines are always very polite and wait for the horses. Um, there's a sense of when you meet somebody, we're all out enjoying the day, and it's, it's just a nice, happy feeling to be on this trail. It's a natural environment that works well for Jill. Being out in the woods and hearing the, the birds chirp and the butterflies floating around and um, seeing the colors change or the leaves budding out really grounds me. Um, and I think it keeps her grounded too because it's more in her element. We'll return to the adventure trail. Right now, we head north to Colebrook, New Hampshire, where we meet another cyclist. I grew up in Colebrook, um, born and raised here. Bridget Freudenberger is a commercial banker. It's mostly a desk job, but when the work day's over, she closes the books and gets out. onto the trails and through the fields around Colebrook. I think every time I'm in a space like this, like we just come off, came off of um, a really wide open space and it just feels really freeing. And um, I don't know, there's something good about having those experiences um, whenever you need to or want to. Bridget left home for a while. She went to school in South Carolina. So I came back to Colbrick because I was working at our local bank before I left to go to school, to go to college. And um, I had an opportunity to come back and, and work for the bank with some upward trajectory. So it seemed like a really good decision to come back. Um, also, I really loved it here and was just drawn to come back. It was a really easy decision for me to do that. The trail's Bridget rides are a lot more up and down than the adventure trail. The challenging terrain helped turn her into a triathlete. This is Bridget at the Lake Placid Ironman. She created a slimmed down version of that race right in her backyard. It's a multi-sport race, so it's mountain biking, paddling, and hiking or trail running. So. Um, and every year I mix it up a little bit. The mileage is always a little bit different. If Bridget has her way, outdoor athletics will become a stronger thread in the cultural fabric of northern New Hampshire. Colbrook hasn't changed a whole lot. Um, uh, you know, a lot of the businesses are the same. Um, there's been some business closures. I think that 
Um, the economy has shifted a bit from um, primarily logging to um, more of a tourism industry and a service industry. The trails that Bridget and Marianne ride on never intersect, but their dreams do. They want hiking and biking to help turn the wheels of northern New Hampshire's economy. For sure, that's something I think about, um, just because there has been a seemingly a, a decline um, for the last several years, and I think long-term about the viability of this area. And it, it seems like there's you know not much outside of sharing these spaces and these experiences with people. So while we've seen um, you know ATVing and snowmobiling really um, explode, I, I would love to see hiking and biking, gravel riding. I mean, we have so many gravel roads and um, you know miles and miles and miles of gravel road. You can connect Maine and Vermont and Canada. Um, and, and just seeing that develop and see a culture for human-powered recreation in this area would be really amazing. Now, I, I expect the towns that this thing passes through are pretty happy with it. Hey? Well, I've gotten good positive feedback. Uh, know, there are 10 New Hampshire communities that this trail goes through and two into Maine. And of course, the um, delis, the coffee shops, the sandwich shops, uh, grocery store, all of those are going to see cyclists coming through right. because they want to be able to fill their water bottles, they want a snack, they want a muffin, they want a cup of coffee, all of this. So the businesses right along the trail should see an increase. This is adding a um, a whole new facet of outdoor uh, recreation, cyclotourism, bringing in people who are riding their bikes longer distances, people from away who want to ride across northern New Hampshire. Maybe they've never been to New Hampshire or Vermont or Maine before, like I have done when I've gone to South Dakota oh, or Nebraska, yeah. <laughs> and I wanted to see what it was all about. Everyone I've dragged up here to, to have a biking experience or a hiking experience has absolutely loved it. Um, and the race that I host in the fall, the metallic race, you know, people who participate in that just, um, just talk about what a unique experience it is and um, how they look forward to coming back year after year. So I know there's sp something very special here and it's just a matter of showing people what there is to do so they can come and feel comfortable doing it on their own. Marianne made it easy for people to use the adventure trail. There's a map that shows you where you are, where you're going, and what you'll see along the way. Cyclists have a number of opportunities. They can use my map that um, is this fold-out map that was designed by Larry Garland, who's the cartographer of the AMC. And on that map is mileage markers and where you can stop to get uh, something to eat, where there's a grocery store, where there's a bicycle shop, campground, a place to stay overnight uh, in a lodge and uh, a medical center, and a place to park the car. Another alternative is you go on the website, you can download um, GPS data from uh, these, you know, websites like Ride with GPS, and that can go onto your iPhone or it can go onto your GPS unit on the bike and it will actually tell you where to turn. It'll warn you that, oh, a, a right turn is coming up. Oh, isn't that nice? And then you take the right turn. Huh. You've done the thing, obviously, yourself. A few times. A few times. Yes. Which gives you a sense of well, I, some accomplishment. Well, I wanted to see what it felt like to start at one end and go all the way across. And I yeah. did it with friends. Yeah. Um, we've done it in the spring at about this time. We've done it in the fall for the beautiful fall foliage in here. Oh, uh, yeah. And uh, we've done it in three days. Anyone who completes the 83-mile trek, no matter how long it takes, is rewarded with a badge of honor. Let's see, right there. My special place when I get my patch done. How many miles do you put in a, at a time? Um, between four and five usually, yeah. 
And then I met Mary Ann through the email and it took off. <laughs> what do you enjoy about being out here? I love walking. I love being in the woods. I love being outdoors in nature. Keeps me young. I've hiked a lot of trails, but just in pieces, but I wanted to hike a complete trail. So I found this one and I'm going to try to make it. Yeah. It's a birthday present to me. What a day. What a beautiful day. When my girls were little, I dragged them out hiking. And then when my grandchildren were born, I dragged them out. And <laughs> now they're all grown and on their own. So I'm hiking alone. Several years ago, we hiked the Pondicherry Trail. This is what it looked like at the time. It's now part of the Cross New Hampshire Adventure Trail. A grant provided a much needed facelift to sections of the trail that tend to erode and wash away. I'm talking to Dave Givetsky, who is, what do you do here? What's your job? Well, I'm a volunteer, Will. Yeah. I, um, I work with the Friends of Pondicherry. It's a group of volunteers that help maintain the trails at the yeah. Pondicherry National Wildlife Refuge. This is Refuge. the Pondicherry Trail. Yeah, this is the main trail going in. This is uh, the old main central railroad line. We now call it the Presidential Range Rail Trail. Now this road, we were on it before a few years ago. It has changed a little bit. It has changed <laughs> and, and what the uh, New Hampshire Bureau of Trails is doing is they're restoring the ditch lines and yeah. they're putting in all new culverts. They haven't been replaced in 50 years. So here's the ditch line that they're, they've put in um, on both sides. So it, it looks a little rough right now. And a lot of them were, were rusted out and breaking through and they're putting in new yeah. culverts that will last 50 to 70 years. And then they're gonna be putting in a surface of ledge pack, crushed rock on, on top, top of this. So it'll wow. be pretty nice once it's done. Yeah, who pays for all this? Uh, this money came from a grant from the uh, federal government. Yeah, right there. Dave spends a lot of time on the trail because of the birds. This is a special <laughs> um, area for birds. It's a migratory bird hotspot. There's over 235 species of birds have been recorded here just on this refuge. Wow. And uh, so, yeah, it's an amazing place. It's, it's, a, it's a place where they come up and they breed during the summer and then they head back down into the into the tropics in the winter time huh. and you know some days in may you can come out here and you can you can record a hundred species of birds <laughs> uh, so there's there's 10 square miles of uh, wetlands that are out here and that's why this area really hasn't been developed because yeah. it's it's swamp it's, wet, it's yeah. wetlands washouts are not unique to the pondicherry section of the trail Many other parts require attention too. Where you find beavers, you'll find dams. And they are very industrious and they build big dams and they have caused issues because the water will overflow onto the trail <laughs> and destroy the trail. Yeah. And it costs money to come in and the Bureau of Trails is here fairly often filling in the gaps um, and they have to remove the beavers because you can't really have a trail and of overflowing beaver pond at the same place at the same time. Yeah. So instead of having to deal with this problem over and over again with the expenses and the time and energy, um, this year four beaver deceivers have been installed. And these are devices that will regulate the water, temp the water level so that the beavers aren't controlling the water level. They can play and get exercise and make all the dam they want, but the water is controlled <laughs> by a big black yes, pipe, which you can see yeah, behind us. Intake underwater, yeah. yeah. The intake is located over here. You can't even see it because it's underwater. And so the end of the pipe is there. There's a filter on top and it's covered by boards and a cage. And the gurgling is not there because it's underwater. Beavers don't like the sound of anything gurgling. They don't like right. the sound yes. of running water <laughs> and they will work all, all night and part of the day to plug it up. So with that being quiet, it's less of a problem. Yeah. So when the water raises up high enough, the water will go out the pipe and over the other side of the dam. People use the adventure trail in all seasons. 
it's common for snowmobiles, bikes, and horses to pass each other on the same day. The first time we met Bridget, she was riding in fresh snow. She was preparing for a tour in a faraway place. Here I am in Laos, crazy. Bridget is biking 400 miles of the Ho Chi Minh Trail. During the Vietnam War, this network of roads and trails was a military supply route for North Vietnamese troops fighting in the South. Today, it's a peaceful highway. Bridget is in Laos with the Be Good Foundation to learn about the region's history and people. I think that I knew that it was going to be um, a stretch for me and an uncomfortable experience. We rode between 35 and 50 miles a day. Um, our travel time was probably like four or five hours, but we always spent time in the villages, um, just stopping and connecting with the people there. The terrain here is both similar to and very different from the trails around Colebrook. Bridget challenges herself to push beyond what feels comfortable. When you're uncomfortable uh, physically, sometimes it brings up you know, a lot of thoughts and emotions. and. Uh, I certainly dealt with that while I was riding. Um, while as a group we were really cohesive and worked well together and functioned together and respected each other's abilities and um, experiences, uh, you know, it was hard and causes you to dig deep, you know, when you are um, challenged on terrain that you're not comfortable with. Some of the lessons Bridget learns along the Ho Chi Minh Trail, she plans to bring home to Colebrook. My race is my like primary focus of, of promoting activity. Um, and I think it gave me some uh, motivation to try and keep that going, because um, that's a ton of work every year, and I always question whether or not I'm going to continue year after year. So. Um, but that serves, it doesn't necessarily serve my community. So I think um, it's more about bringing awareness. Um, I'm hoping to work with the chamber on um, promoting some human powered recreation activities through their efforts, um, their tourism efforts, um, and hoping to do a couple films and talks at our local Tillotson Center to um, just uh, help people understand that movement doesn't mean you have to sign up for a marathon or a big race or a big trip, but it's really, you know, as simple as making a habit or a practice of going outside and um, finding something that you really enjoy at whatever level and, and doing it and it becoming a part of, of what you do and who you are and, um, and the value of that. So you dreamed of this thing? He's brought it to fruition, long gestation, and uh, you must feel great to see people using it and happy and smiling and whatever. Yeah, it's really, it really feels good to see people enjoying it. And I, yeah. I did put the word adventure in this. It does yeah. have some challenges here and there, and a lot of people really enjoy those challenges. It's, you know, the, the, the dirt pathways and the roads are not always perfectly smooth. There might be some gravel, there might be some sand, some soft spots, some loose rocks, so you have to be a little careful. Mm -hmm. um, but everybody ha seems to have a favorite place, and it's not always the same place. Some places are rougher, and people love that, and some people love the smoother places. It's just interesting to see how they all look at this through a different yeah. set of eyes. Well, it has come to be that time once again that I like least the time we have to, we have to say goodbye. I just want to express my profound thanks to Marianne, the walker, the dog walkers, the bike riders, 
the equestrians, all the trail bums of the Cross New Hampshire Adventure Trail. It's been a wonderful trip, and we thank you for coming along with us. And now it is time to say bye-bye, and I hope to see you again on Windows to the Wild. Support for the production of Windows to the Wild is provided by the Alice J. Reen Charitable Trust, the Fuller Foundation, the Gilbert Verney Foundation, and viewers like you. Thank you.